As you can probably tell by the title, I'm just driving to Fort Park today to check out a few new things that are around the park and speculate on some potential updates. Hyperia is already testing. Oh, she's going up the lift hill. That is brilliant timing. Still can't get used to having this roller coaster right here and well, just how silly it makes Colossus and Saw look. Absolute pipsqueaks. Oh, here it goes. Nice to see it's a quiet one today. According to some of my friends and very reliable sources, there's some new theming and new updates around the park to check out as of this month. Also, apparently Hyperia has had some theming added to the queue. Highly doubt that, but we'll check it out anyway. And then finally, with Hyperia being such a success, let's speculate on what could be next. That kind of rhymed. Bars. On a sunny day, this skyline at Fort Park is absolutely rubbish. Rare days where the beach probably would be a good idea. Bring back Love Island late. Or not. But actually, thinking of the beach, we should probably come back and have a look at this later. I tell you what, you, you're actually just going to have to keep watching to find out. Sorry, I'm distracted. It's a roller coaster. Shock. Let's go on stealth. Before anyone gets excited, there's no real reason for me to go on stealth. I just fancy having a go because I've not been on it in probably like two months. Which, now I say it, that's quite pathetic. It's not been long at all, but I like it. It's an absolutely perfect day for Tidal Wave to be closed. It's not like it's one of those rare 30 degree days here in the UK where it's actually suitable weather for Tidal Wave. Oh no, that's karma for taking a mickey out of Fort Park. Ouch. That actually hurts my feelings. Oh, look how zoomed. <laughs> I do what I want, don't I? And if you do enjoy my bad boy attitude and go on to enjoy this video, please do consider subscribing. It's just that little button underneath. Thank you. Easy Boulevard has actually been really nicely maintained. The colors are still very vibrant, even pretty much halfway into the season. The Sunset Cinema. As much as I don't really like the showings, the Ready Player One, it is still a very nice addition because having it as just a vague cinema means that they can update the shows in there quite frequently and use it as a marketing campaign to attract people back to the park at incremental points of the season. And also if they miss with something rubbish like Ready Player One, they can easily update it. Just put a new show on. Oh, I'm gonna start on detonator while I'm here. Actually hate drop towers, but I don't know why. Just fancy having a go today. Not gonna lie, I thought it's gonna go up. On a day where everything's got a long, long queue, five minutes, even I can't say no to that. Well, I could, but I'm not going to. And then after this, I promise I'm gonna go check out the new stuff because I think that's probably the main reason why a lot of people look onto this video. It's a good sentence. I also really like the audio, even though it's probably talking over me, or I'm talking over it. Am I all right to set up the camera just, just like at the side so it catches me come down? No, not at all. No. The man's checking for me, so fingers crossed. Don't ask, don't get. Just on that? That's good, thank you. but you best believe I'm not doing that again. That was very intense. <gasps> no, I've left my sunglasses. They've got him in here. Oh, oh, they should just be in that little box where you put your loose articles, hopefully. And they're only Primark, so no one would have chored them. This is averted. 
Now I'm going to go over to Hyperion and see if there has actually been any additions or whether people are just waffling. You never know, fingers crossed, because the queue line and the whole area does let it down a bit. As a roller coaster, it's my number one roller coaster in the UK. In terms of hardware, it's the best we've got. But the finishing, the beaming, the aesthetic around it does let it down and there's not enough shade. Nemesis, nemesis. What a good timing. Last video where I went to Alton Towers, I did make a mistake on what train you needed to get to go to the future Universal Great Britain. And Marcus, thankfully, called me out in the comments. Nice one, idiot. Anyway, I think this is the correct train to get to Bedford, where it will be. Must also be free of heart. Is however closed at the moment. Please do not ride. That thing is blooming enormous. That's actually quite cinematic. Call me Thrill Riders. Actually don't, I dislike that boy. I'll say that it is nice that they themed up all of the surrounding buildings and this little main street to follow the same theming slash stylization of Hyperia. There it goes. What a wicked ride, the airtime, I can almost sense it. But the queue itself I'll show you is just way too open and on a day like today, People are going to get sunburned. But look what I mean, they have spared all the expense on the beaming and the queue line. In on the ride though, that's cool. Get me wrong what they have, oh, look at that go. Good timing. But don't get me wrong, what they have added is decent, like the archway, the entrance archway for Hyperia looks cool. The train design looks cool, although I would have liked to have had some real lighting on the front instead of just the fake. I think they're just vinyls. The stage over there is decent but small, the Hyporium's decent, Cloud Treats here, Cloud Nine Treats, also decent. You get the point, everything's decent but decent for a roller coaster like this that is the signature ride here at Fort Park just doesn't quite cut it and that was why I was hoping that they'd have added at least a little bit to the queue. Bop into the stall before I continue with that because that bit of the ride is so cool and photogenic. Love it. But then as we pan back down, <laughs> what am I? <laughs> Who do I think I am? <laughs> All is not lost because other roller coasters have added shelter theming pieces to the queue line after opening. Look at Wickerman over at Alton Towers, for example. They added the canopies for shade and shelter like three years, no, four years after the roller coaster initially opened. So there is still hope. Oh, that wasn't as good as I wanted. There we go. So there is still hope. Nah, there's no point doing it again. Let's just point it all the way up. Hurry up, please. It's getting awkward now. People are looking at me. Don't care. Literally do what I want. But it would be nice if you got up there because I'm starting to get social anxiety. Okay, there we go. Now drop. Oh, so Thanks for getting involved, my friend. Wasn't worth it. I guess you do have these murals scattered around the queue that you can look at. I believe it's some sort of compass or map. But in terms of preoccupying yourself when you're in such a long queue, it's not so much. The station, however, inside that shoebox does look quite nice and there is a launch sequence or a dispatch sequence as you leave the station. Smoke effects, a screen in front of you and some nice audio to accompany it. Oh, it's time to speculate. for the ride is going down so quickly it's a super busy extremely sunny Sunday in July nearly August but the summer holidays and 
and it's currently on an hour's queue and people have come off it and said that they were only queuing for around 40 minutes which is incredible also the single rider queue worth noting that that has been getting riders on within around 20 minutes so if you're here on your own or don't care about <laughs> riding it with your mates then just do the single rider queue Best way to beat the queues on Hyperia this summer. You heard it here first, hopefully. Get a shot of it just come through the trees there, but maybe not, I'll come back later. But then over opposite it, next to Colossus, we have the old Black Mirror Labyrinth area, which, as you can see, is gone, which I'm thankful about. It was rubbish, but it does beg the question, will we get anything to replace it in the not so distant future between Hyperia's opening in 2024 and the potential next speculative big project here at Fort Park. Could it be another walkthrough used for Fright Nights or could we even get a new flat ride to replace the Slammer? Who knows, but more speculation, more important speculation, I must add. Over to the beach to put on my speculation hat, but thankfully, Tidal Wave has reopened. It's actually, I might go on this today. I might give it a ride. Four unsuspecting people coming out the station. It's just cresting the lift hill. It's gonna get them. Wait there, wait there. It won't get you, it won't get you, I promise. Today, I've done a whole circuit of the park and it looks very tidy and everything has been very well kept so kudos to the team for upkeep here because presentation I've never seen it much better this is good news now time to put on my speculation hat time to be speculation Sam Hyperia being such a huge success and bringing a lot more of an audience to Fort Park, this must mean that they're going to be planning another big investment in terms of adding to the roller coaster lineup because double down on something has been what seems to be a great return on investment. But what could it be and when? Now I'm stood over by the beach for good reason because some people have been speculating that with this being a prime and very underutilized space as you can see it's a sunny day there's no one here could this be the site for the next big roller coaster or ride coming to the park i think it could be either in this space or the space over behind the swarm which is kind of like the plan b in my opinion what could it be we've now got a hyper coaster that's heavily focused on giving good airtime. We have a sit down looper in Colossus. Of course, the wing coaster, the invert, and a pretty decent launch coaster in stealth. So that leaves two quite obvious gaps in the lineup. The first one being a wooden coaster, which I think is unlikely. It doesn't quite fit the modern aesthetic of Fort Park. Fit, fits a lot better into the Alton Towers lineup with the Wicker Man. So I don't think it will be a wooden coaster, but what it could be is a spinner. Something similar to the Ride to Happiness over at Plopsalander Pan in Belgium, which isn't too far from here, but with it not being in the UK, that leaves not only a gap in the lineup for Fort Park, but also a gap in the lineup for the entire country. Which is why I believe that could be the front runner. A extreme max spinner here on the beach area, especially seen as Fort Park have very successfully worked with Mac to build Hyperia this year. But what else could it be? Over on the site behind the swarm, there were original plans for a new coaster. Back in 2011, when the swarm was confirmed, it was actually part of a two part project with the Swarm opening as the first B&M, a wing coaster, and then a larger B&M, which I believe was supposedly a hyper coaster, expanding the area behind onto unused land, a B&M hyper coaster on the plot of land, which 
around this time last year was home to the supports and the track that was eventually used for Hyperia. I believe this is a pretty viable plan B, not as likely as an extreme spinner, but with Stealth being technically a hypercoaster, but a launched mini Stratocoaster, that doesn't fit the bill of a, of a regular hypercoaster similar to Shambhala or Mako where it's all focused on long sustained airtime hills. And the same goes for that beautiful beast of a coaster over there, Hyperia. With it again, although being an airtime machine, does have a nice variety of inversions mixed in with airtime hills to get slightly different sensations of airtime more ejector and it's going again let's zoom in let's get a good shot of that zoom quicker zoom quicker zoom quicker zoom quicker nice <laughs> slight distraction there back to speculation and that leaves when could this project potentially happen it would in my opinion be in at least four years because Merlin as a company tend to alternate between Fort Park and Alton Towers for new coaster projects and that would mean that Alton Towers comes next of course with Project Horizon which as it stands I believe is on track for 2026 or 2027 should that go ahead. With that meaning that Alton Towers probably preoccupies the budget of Merlin for the foreseeable future. Any new coasters here, we'd be looking at two years on top of that, so around 2029, which would align nicely with Universal Great Britain and enable Merlin and Fort Park to compete with a large new competitor in the space. That's my speculation. Let me know in the comments if you agree with any of it or you think there could be some truth in it in the long run. Thanks so much for watching. Like the video if you did enjoy it. Ciao, legends. That was good, wasn't it? Please, sir, can we have some more? You don't have to call me, sir. But here's your link. Click it. Sir Punalot would sound cool, though.